Hello, 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 guys. Let's hit that button. Go live. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, strangers. <laughs> right, stranger. I feel like I've been away for a year. Happy Sunday, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hello, Sue Potts and Linda and Bonnie and Cindy and Loretta. And I saw Kathy McAllister and Virginia and Chris and Bonnie and Mona and Mary and Peg. <laughs> so many of you guys on. Hello, Kay and Desiree. That rhymed. Hello, Linda. Hi, Janet Roach. So good to see you guys on. Um, <laughs> just before I went live, my glasses are filthy. So can't really see much. <laughs> which is probably a good thing today. It's been a day, let me tell you. Hi, Cindy. So, hi, Diane. I feel like I have not seen you guys or been here in forever. Um, aw, thank you, Loretta. Hi, Lucy. It was so awesome to see you too and see your sweet face, Bonnie, at OKC. Of course, my husband went and got me a Diet Coke. It's been one of those days. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Cindy. I was thinking it really did not look real good, so thank you. I appreciate that. So we are streaming on um, YouTube and on Facebook. Hello, Monty. Hi, Keiko. Um, hi, Janet up in Mass. I, um, yeah, I'll get into that in a minute, but <laughs> it's been a day. So I had different plans for today, but you know how things work, right? Technology and all that. So we had to have a little bit of a, a shift, but I'll explain later. Hi, Linda. Hi, Debbie Sears. Aw, thank you, Loretta. Yes, I, um, I need to get it cut. <laughs> Hi, Mona. So anyway, but I do like it longer in the winter when it's cold, so I can kind of keep it down on my neck. Summer. I like it long, but I put it up the majority of the time, so. Oh, that's fantastic, Loretta. You'll have to share the pics in the group um, of your painting. God, my hands are so dry. So, yeah, it's been, um, hi, Linda from Winnipeg, the place I wanna go. My husband's been, but. Hi, Anne, good to see you on. Joining for the first time. Well, thank you, Shelby. So happy that you're here. So happy you're here. It's 87, which we're not in the 90s, so that's good. So many of you guys still are. Um, the weather has actually been pleasant. It's been raining a little bit. My flowers are fully blooming. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty. Your art room is gorgeous. Thank you, Andrea. It's, I wish I could pan around and show you everything. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it's full. <laughs> Let me say that. Okay, Linda, thank you for the heads up. I don't do brutal cold. I don't do cold, let alone brutal cold. Um, Zoom went great yesterday, Sue. Thank you. I don't think I have my piece here, but um, it was a wonderful Zoom class. So, what a small little group, but you know what? I Like I told them. One person shows up to paint with me, guess what? I'm gonna paint. <laughs> we had more than one. Um, but it was nice, nice project. And I am zooming, um, let's see, I think I have it here, but again, like I mentioned last time, disregard the fact that it says in person. It's not in person, it's only on Zoom. But there's the contact information. Those are the days, um, but again, we're not meeting in person, we're only meeting virtually. Um, but we're painting those two projects, and if you want to paint with me, it'll be recorded. You can have the recording for up to a year, and um, we'd love to have you join us. So, anyway, lost all my sites and friends. Need everyone to send me new requests. Oh, my goodness, Linda. I can't see. All I see is Linda. I don't know which Linda, and I have, I think there's two or three Lindas in my group. And I don't even know how many Lindas on Facebook I'm friends with, but um, but please let me know. Send me a message. Um, YouTube's freezing. I'm sorry, I haven't seen anything freezing here. So maybe on your end, maybe refresh. Hello, Donna. Hi, Pam. 
have missed you these last few weeks. I have missed you guys so much. I have been away, busy. Um, the picture of the grapes. Um, Doris, I actually did that in water soluble oils, but I did a lesson, and I don't think I have it here, uh, or maybe it's that one. I did a lesson in my membership group, and I get this asked all the time, guys. <laughs> What's in your membership group? How, you know, I want to paint that. I did um, a wood grain with Chinese lanterns on it um, that my sweet friend Kathy wants me to, to do. The thing is, they're in my membership group. And in my membership group, there's over 160 plus recorded lessons. And I paint with them monthly, at least three times a month. Um, plus, we have Zoom classes. So the grapes was a Zoom class. The, um, let's see if I have it, if you can see it. Nope, I don't think you can. We did a Tuscan scene. We did a winter scene. Um, so anyway, you can always find that information on my website. Look under the membership tab. Even if you're like, I wanna paint that, join for the month, look at it. Look around the group, see if you, you know, see anything else, you can cancel at any time. All right, but if you go to my website, my web short, my website and click on that link uh, for membership it will give you all the information okay so hello Patrick hello Linda Safranco so yes it's so nice to be back I um I was gone almost all of August and I think I was home six days oh goodness OKC was Fantastic. I know I shared a lot of pictures. Hopefully you guys saw those on um, Facebook. So watching my saints play. Refs cheat us on a pass interference. <laughs> Hello, Tammy. I'm sure you were screaming at that TV, right, Lucy? Oh, thank you, Darlene. I thought the grapes were fun, too, to paint. A fantabulous, a fantabulous group to participate. Lots of lessons, techniques, and super learnings. Thank you, Sue Potts. I greatly appreciate that. Hi, Don. So, so many of y'all from the group here. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Donna. Again, when I went on, I'm like, oh, I really probably should pull my hair up. <laughs> um, my husband's watching NASCAR. Not sure if tennis is on yet, but he'll be watching that. Probably switching back and forth. He was hoping Formula One was on today, but he couldn't find it. So, internet messed up on YouTube. Now I'm back. Oh, well, I'm glad you're back. Um... Linda Safranco, are you talking about your Facebook? Oh my goodness. Yes, definitely, I will. It, it's such, I love social media, but that part of it stresses me out because if anything happened to my page, my pages, my Instagram, my website is an absolute wreck, as you guys know, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, I've had several friends dealing with their Facebook being taken over or shut down, and it's very, very frustrating. I do have mine, hello, Wendy Warner. I do have mine on um, like second, what is that? Two-factor verification, authentication verification. Um, and I'm hoping that that helps, but who knows, so. Oh my goodness, Linda, I'm so, so sorry to hear that. What an absolute mess. Um, Kathy Pruitt, it's so good to see you too. Okay, guys, so, um, yes, I, oh, that's such a nightmare. Really, it's one of my biggest fears. Um, what's happening? What's happening, Loretta? <laughs> so, you know, people's pages being taken over and stuff, it's... Um, it's difficult, and then to have to go through all the work to get it back. So, what a nightmare. All righty. So, like I said, OKC was fantastic. I got to see so many of y'all that I only get to see once a year, meet many of y'all that I haven't uh, met before, um, like Loretta Lynn, who's uh, new to my group, new to my friend group, too, and um, was lovely to see you, meet you in person. Um, the booth was amazing. And let me just say, it was probably my best trade show in the entire time I've done OKC, which was fantastic. Um, the owner of Decor was there. He gave a great speech, and I got so many compliments about him being there. You know, they would come by the booth and say so, which was nice. 
Um, what else? So then I came home from OKC, was home just a couple days, dropped everything in the kitchen and dining room, and my husband unloaded most of my products so I could get orders out. But then we went to St. Augustine, which was amazing. If you've not been to St. Augustine, you should go. <laughs> Let me just say, it's a beautiful, um, historic town um, in our United States. In fact, I think the first, right, city. Um, and it was just full of history. It was wonderful. My back was not cooperating, which was not fun. Um, and it's still not doing great, but doing much better than it was. So anyway, um, oh my goodness, Linda, I just feel so bad for you. Hello, Ann Burling. Good to see you on. Hi, D. Okay, so um, I am in convention submission mode and have been for a while. And I worked on a couple things before I went to OKC. And one of the things I was doing was some kits. So I did my, um, I love this little guy. So I did my snowman make and take, and that's gonna be a kit on my website. And I was working on a few others, got one done, can't get it on my website. So my website host sold to Vistaprint. Vistaprint bought them and Wix, and now they're converting everything over to the Wix platform. So, <laughs> I have not been able to get on all weekend long to update anything, to, if anything's sold out, I can't change it. Um, I couldn't add the thing I wanted to share with you guys today, so I had to pivot and do something that I've been working on personally for myself. Um, but I think y'all will enjoy it, hopefully. So, anyway. Oh, yes, I have one sending to my granddaughter to make. What are you sending to your granddaughter, Loretta? That sounds fun. Um, okay. I am going to show you. Um, well, first off, let's do this. First person on YouTube to comment was Kay Merriman. And the first person on uh, Facebook was Kathy McAllister. Funny enough, both of you are in my membership group. <laughs> anyway, message me your um, pick, whatever e-packet on my website that you would like, I will send it to you, okay? Has to be on there now. So, <laughs> not that I'll be adding any of them anytime soon, but I do have some to add, unfortunately. So, anyway, um, I do have some giveaways. We have a laser cut set, a brush set, and a stencil set. And all you have to do is like, comment, and share. Like, comment, share. That will get you entered into the drawings for the giveaways. And I will be having a live next Sunday, hopefully sharing the thing I was going to share with you today. Um, and I will announce the winners then. Okay? Like, comment, and share. All righty. Let's get rid of that. So, hello, Linda Johnson. So many Lindas. Linda, Linda, Linda. My sister's Linda. <laughs> You're so welcome, Kathy. Yeah, just message me. Aw, thank you, Peg. I love you back. Um, and I love that snowman. And again, what I was going to share with you guys today that's going to have to wait, um, I will hopefully be able to do next week. Okay. So first I want to show you what um, I always love to share. Let's come down here and I'll share with you what I do with my membership group. So this is what we're doing this month. We're actually, do you share public or just friends? Whatever you want, Tracy, doesn't matter. If you share to a group, just make sure you're allowed to share to a group. I don't want anyone getting in trouble for sharing where they're not supposed to share. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, and so for the... Um, laser cut set, the stencil set, and the brush set. Again, I will be drawing for those next week. Um, so make sure that you like, comment, share, okay? So this month with my membership group, we have been working with um, inspiration from Old World Masters. And this month, we're doing a take on um, Girl with a Pearl Earring. Now you might look and go, well, that's not the Girl with a Pearl Earring. It's not, but what I did is I took the color inspiration from the girl with the pearl earring and I created this page doing underpainting, which Vermeer was very known for. Um, a lot of old world masters were. A lot of people still do it, okay? 
But anyway, so these were um, our couple of our lessons this month with my group. Okay, so the thing I was going to share with you guys today, I feel like my, there we go, um, is this. This is another kit that I have coming soon. Let's see if I have it listed on here. Do I have it on here? I don't. All righty. But it's going to be posted on my website soon. Okay, so this fun little kit, and I am all about pumpkin spice. I love pumpkin spice. <laughs> I do have some other words um, that you could get if you don't want pumpkin spice. But anyway, so in this kit that I'm going to have available soon, and hopefully next Sunday I will be painting this, um, it comes with the following in the kit, okay? Now, you can't order it just yet because, of course, I can't get it loaded on my site. Um, but this is a five-and-a-half-inch circle, um, MDF there, and this fun little cup and a little laser-cut pumpkin. And then with it comes the words, pumpkin spice, and then it comes with two full M square stencils. Now, retail on these is $12, okay? So M238, M275, both of those stencils are coming with the kit. Got a hair there. And then this fun little applicator, which I will share with you guys uh, next week when I paint it, hopefully, live. Um, and then a little sanding block. So all that in that little kit to create your own little pumpkin spice plaque. I love this. I love, love, love. <laughs> because I love everything pumpkin spice too. So, um, ooh, pumpkin spice bread, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, but the other thing is, you know, I have, um, I'll have happy fall words that you could, you know, get separate. Um, and then I am gonna do separate, um, like, cups and pumpkins or cups that have a hole in them that you can make into an ornament. And I'll have all those listed on my site whenever my site is up for me to list things. So let's move that out of the way. This is a fantastic applicator that Nanette in Texas um, showed me, shared with me. Anyway, I had to get them and I thought that would be great because making that pumpkin spice um, word ombre or two-tone so much easier with that little applicator, okay? So as soon as this is available, I'll let you guys know, okay? Same thing with my um, Let It Snow guy. I'll let you know when that kit's available as well, okay? So since I wasn't able to get those loaded on my site and do that with you guys today, I wanted to share with you um, something that I was personally working on and I had shared with you guys a video um, alive maybe last year or the year before on how to, I love, love, love. Let me slow down a minute. I love the way that paint can transform something. Don't you? I mean, this is a plastic gold bell from the Dollar Tree. And I don't know where my, my original is. This was one that was thrown up in my little bin. So I think it might have been one I started but didn't finish. But I bought some pumpkins because I wanted to decorate with some pumpkins. But I didn't like the orange neon. Um, let's see if that's... <laughs> uh, styrofoam. But I did get a couple of pumpkins and then I used paint to make them look like aged wrought iron. Uh, do you have a stencil with inspiration words? Dream, inspire, create, etc. I don't, Wendy, but I need to message you because I did I do have an extra of the one that you wanted before that you asked me because our sweet dear Molly Ann that's in our group um, sent me one. So um, but yeah, I, I will look into, in fact, let me just make myself a note. Let me make a note. Dream, Create, Inspire. That was the name of my blog that I started in 2005 and had for, oh my gosh, I still have it, many, many, many years. Um, 
but I used to have like 150,000 people and that used to get hits daily. And then I just got busy. <laughs> so like most of us, right? Okay, so this is styrofoam. Now, you could come in and fill in areas like this. I didn't bother, but you certainly could with two products. You can use, um, yes, it's a regular acrylic paint, Loretta. Hi, Marty. Um, you could fill in with a couple of things. Modeling paste. You can use some texture sand, which I used. I'm going to, you can hear that, right? I'm going to show you how I did that with the texture sand. Um, and then just dry brushing paint on or washing paint on. So I wanted to put these on my mantle. And so this one that I got at the Dollar Tree was orange. And this one um, is just a regular white paper mache, not paper mache, goodness gracious. You could do paper mache though, um, styrofoam, okay? And then I also got, oh, I didn't bring my other one over here, but this is what it looks like. You can see the gold on the bottom there. It looked like this, but it was gold. And so I just went ahead and painted it black as well with regular, and then I'm just gonna dry brush it and show you guys how you can transform things. In fact, I do wanna run over and grab, let me grab that, um, what you call it, that other pumpkin, so. <clears throat> okay. So when I shared the, the bell last year with you guys, this is what it looked like. This was the original. Um, and this one doesn't have the squares on it. The one I shared on the live does. I Again, I want to say it was last December or sometime last year or the year before. All the days and years run together, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, so it looked like this. And I transformed it to this. What a difference. So again, love, love, love the way paint works. So I wanted to share three products with you today in addition to showing you how to create that faux finish. Um, and the first one is texture sand. Okay, so this is that. And we're going to transform it. Now, you can take a sanding block and scuff this up before I forget to tell you. I like to just scuff it up. You have a couple options too. You can base coat it with a multi-purpose, um, a multi-surface paint if you want to. I just use regular Americana. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use chalk paint or you can use gesso, okay? But giving it a little scuff, the paint stuck to it beautifully. So let's move that out of the way. Oh, you remember me doing these? Oh, awesome, Tara, okay. So the first one, like I said, that I want to share with you guys is texture sand paste. You can get this at decoart.com. Let's see if I've got my code right there. I do. You can use that discount code for a one-time 20% off your entire order um, when you order at decoart.com. All right, so we're going to talk about texture sand paste and maybe a little unexpected for you, but some snow text great texture. It's not just for Christmas projects, guys. Um, and then the other one is glitter base coat, okay? This is a gritty little glitter, and I don't know if you saw the pumpkins behind me. Let me see if I can move out of my camera's way. See those pumpkins right there behind me? Those are glittered. Oh my gosh. Um, and they have art glitter on them. So, I'm going to tell you about this product and show you a really cool way of how it works. I went ahead and already prepped just a plain board with it um, so that you can see the effect, all right? But let's start with the texture um, sand paste. So, um, let me find da -da 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 -da, a palette knife. Okay, so the texture sand paste can be mixed with any paint color. And what I did was I mixed it with black. Um, let's just mix it with a little bit of brown. I have no black sitting here. Again, I had to pivot today. I've just been trying. But anyway, see how you can just, you can mash that palette knife down. It gives it some grit. Um, just makes a nice little texture. 
I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, it's, and see the texture in that paint. All right, just makes it nice and um, texturized so that when you go to paint over it, you get some really cool effects. All right, well, let's move that out of the way. And then, snow text. With snow text, what I would do with that, you can mix it up to a certain amount, but what I like to do, and what I was doing on this, was getting kind of um, a malachite. If you're familiar with malachite, it is um, eight months ago. Thank you, Molly Ann. <laughs> So yes, snow text does adhere to non-porous surfaces. This is on a, kind of a mat, and I did scuff it up a little bit um, to get it to stick, but this is on a mat um, vase that's glass, okay? So what I recommend with snow text, um, and Holly Hanley does amazing things with snow text and her bears, is to actually put it on let it dry, and you could base coat underneath it if you wanted to, but pat it, pat it, pat it, pat it, and it will stick and stay. It's not going to crack, and then, and I did this, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, I was playing around with different textures and stuff, and so see, you can just kind of pat it around, and then when it's dry, that's my preferred way of coming in and painting with it, okay? If you mix it with paint, let's just mix it with that brown. Do you see how it makes it a light tan? So it won't, it won't give you the full color. You can always let it dry and paint the color on top. But I absolutely love the look of this. And so I did it all jewel green, and then I came in with some soft black, and I just started... Um, kind of ombre it up with a little bit of water. So, but what a difference, right? So let's move that out of the way. Again, that's snow text. What I used today um, was, and again, I don't know if you can hear it, is that texture sand um, on the pumpkin. On this one, I just used black paint, but you certainly could use some texture sand, okay? Now, since we're talking about the three different, let me just go ahead and show, well, I'll leave that there. Show you, um, thank you, Robin, November, 2022. Wow, okay. Um, so the glitter base coat, again, I brushed onto this little surface here. It's just a little wood piece. And you can, Put your glitter out. So I'm gonna use some um, Aqua. This is Deco Arts um, Galaxy Glitter. I love it. I love the holographic illusions. So let me look behind me and get a fan brush. Um, I like the way that it adheres with a fan brush and spreads. So this one is Solar Flare Orange. How fun is that name? Now. You're gonna load up that brush, and what happens is look how much coverage you get because the texture, can you hear that? The texture is grabbing that glitter, okay? Now, I could have color underneath if I wanted to, but it is going to give you exceptional coverage as it grabs that glitter off your brush, okay? This is not a paid promotion. I'm not getting paid to do this live. I'm sharing with you guys three of my favorite products to get texture. Um, modeling paste is another. But since I was working on those pumpkins and I had to pivot my lesson for today, I figured I might as well share all of these with you. Okay, but look how much coverage you get from that. Now, if I do the other side that has nothing on it, let me show you the difference. This will be fun to lay down. <laughs> so you get coverage, but look how much coverage you get, okay? Now again, you can base cut underneath it with orange, red, whatever color you want, but look how much coverage you get using that glitter base coat, right? Incredible, it just grabs it right off your brush. 
and leaves it a little bit more concentrated. I'm gonna move this to the side. Alrighty, so let's come to our piece that I'm gonna share with you today. And I did um, dry brushed asphaltum. Um, what is the other color? Dried clay. So let me just show you the colors I used. Asphaltum. Black was my base coat. Asphaltum, dried clay, um, burnt sienna, and Bahama blue, because why not, <laughs> right? So you could also throw in a little bit of peacock teal. That's just gonna give you a richer um, uh, turquoise color. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little so that you can see this and hear it as it comes off that brush. So I'm going to start with some asphaltum, and basically I'm dry brushing the whole time, and some dried clay, and I haven't done, I haven't done anything to this one yet. It's the, I just base coated it the other day. Um, so we'll see what we come up with that. I grabbed some greens, thinking that we could do a little patina. Um, do yourself a favor. Get rid of these little things on the top of your paint. It will shut. A lot better if you do okay um, I'm gonna get out a little bit of peacock teal and of course some Bahama blue all righty hello Julie okay so you want to use a dry brush doesn't matter what size um, like I mentioned this one doesn't have the the seam on this one, the orange one that I got at Dollar Tree, goes down both sides, and then you see the seam around the, the top, right? This one that I just got a couple weeks ago from the Dollar Tree didn't have a seam at all at the top, which I was happy about, and the seam was in the middle, which I thought would be fun. You could even cut that, you know, um, and do two parts, but it was a white um, styrofoam. All right, so dry brush, dry paper towels. We're gonna take our brush and load it, and I'm using a three-quarter flat wash, black gold by Dynasty. Um, asphaltum, load it up, wipe it off. Now, it's not gonna show up like super bright or anything. Faux finishing's all about layers. So letting those layers show up without taking away all that you have underneath it. Okay, so, and I don't know that I'm going to do the whole pumpkin, but I will definitely do at least half. Just show you. And so this is kind of a, um, a patinaed aged wrought iron, if you will, similar to like I did the bells last year. Um, but I don't know that I used that dried clay on there. When I was playing around with these the other day to put them on my mantle, um, I just wanted a little bit more of an orangey color, and that dried clay seemed perfect. Okay, we don't want to cover too much, and you do want to keep, you know, that background color showing through, but can you see those little patches of asphaltum? Okay, what happens as you start to build those layers is you start to see the colors underneath even better. All right, so... I'm going to um, wipe off that brush. No need to wash it out. Pick up some of the dried clay. And again, just kind of dry brush that on. What you're going to start to get, even with those three colors, black, asphaltum, and that dried clay, is almost a bronze. Um, or if you went a little bit heavier, you could get even a little bit copper. Okay, but I love, love, love that combination. And just where it hits, and look how it's hitting the ridges on that um, styrofoam. Again, paint is transformative. It's not just for painting pretty pro uh, projects, you know. Transforming and changing and altering the look of something just amazes me. Okay, so look how pretty that's starting to come up. Hopefully you're seeing that in the light. Hello, Deb. 
All right, I'm going to wipe that off really, really well. Again, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, share. That's what will get you entered into the uh, giveaway drawings. Ooh, it's hot in my studio. All right, I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna. It's just going to give us that really pretty golden brown look. And when it hits that dried clay, look what it does. How pretty that is. Okay, let's get rid of that. And again, dry brushing it on, but trying not to cover up what you put on before and not covering up the entire background. Okay. But if you go to the Dollar Tree or anything for that matter, the Goodwill, the thrift stores, and you see something and you're like, oh, it's pretty. It just the color won't match my house. Guess what? We have paint. We can transform things with paint, right? And if you do get a little heavy handed, you can always backtrack, go to the previous color. So you can always go back to black, back to a little bit of that um, dried clay, which I'm going to do. Hi, Kimberly from Virginia. Thank you, Mona. I just love how you take a surface and transform it completely. It's fascinating to watch. Thank you, Chris. It fascinates me to see it happen. Um, you know, right before your eyes, you've got this thing that's white styrofoam that all of a sudden looks like it weighs, you know, 50 pounds or more, and it doesn't. So, you know, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout at the thrift store, at the Dollar Tree for those things that you're like, ooh, that would look really pretty in my house, but need to change the color. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. Again, that's black, dried clay, burnt sienna. And then I am going to switch brushes because I want that blue to really show up. So let me grab, I'll just do a number 12. It probably doesn't hurt you to also um, like use brushes that are maybe your, they don't have great chisel edges. All right, I wouldn't use my best brushes for this. Um, hi, Bonnie. But you know, I would certainly use, thank you, Sue. I would use um, brushes that you might have that the chisel edge is completely gone. Um, don't throw those away. Those are great for this type of painting. Okay, so this one is a one encaustic flat. Um, it's got a bristle brush. You know that the um, other brush that's lovingly known as the fugly brush, Tracy's brush. Um, so this is the one inch oval. This is the one inch flat. I don't carry these, but you can get them on thebrushguys.com. Um, so I'm going to load up some peacock teal and let's get a dry paper towel. You can use a fan brush, works great as well. Oop, a little too much, gotta wipe it off. But I'll show you how to fix that. Now, we don't want too much of this color. We just want a little bit, again, just to give it a little patinaed look. I'm gonna go back to a flat with some burnt sienna. And go right over that and look how that tones that down that blue that I got a little too heavy all right so that's the peacock teal now let's pick up some of the Bahama blue and I'm just gonna work that in um, well that's <laughs> that's not great Tara that you have a whole bunch of uh, yucky brushes but perfect for uh, this style of um, painting or type of painting okay especially with the texture you don't want to ruin your good brushes all right this is Bahama blue I'm going to load it up wipe it off and there's a little tint of blue there I don't know if you can see it Let's see on the camera there again you don't want to use too much and I do love just going back and forth with the colors so just because the process, you know, is putting this on the bottom and then this layer and this layer doesn't mean that you can't go, oh, I want a little more dried clay. 
needs a little more dry clay up here. And when it hits those colors, it hits differently. Okay, but look at all that very patinaed, almost wrought iron looking. It really looks heavy, doesn't it? So love, love, love the look of that. Um, you could throw in some greens and things like that. I did this entire one. I saw some spots though when I went to put it on my mantle that I can see a little bit of orange still. So all you have to do is come in, you know, and pop in a little bit of that color. You could do it with water as well. The water is gonna seep right in. See how that'll go right into that color and you won't be able to see that orange. Okay, you can hear that texture, all right? So that's my 50 pound pumpkin that actually I could throw across the room. Um, play around with those colors, that dried clay, burnt sienna, and then asphaltum is a neutralizer. So if you're like, oh, that just needs to like come together. Um, I think I might do it on half of this pumpkin here. That if you need to like bring all those colors back together. Let me see, do I have, I do, right there. And I'll take that big brush. Well, I'll use this one because I didn't get the other one wet. But I'll take a big brush, put some asphaltum in it, make it very, very inky see there on the screen and let's do a part that maybe got a little too bright and you could do a little bit of a wash over that now look what that just did okay it needs to be dry but what it just neutralized all those colors made it a little bit softer I love that in fact so much that I want to do that for my mantle piece so I'm gonna do that whole side Okay, so you can do that, or you can just leave it with all the different colors, whereas I think that really shows the different colors prettier. Mm, 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 mm. Love that. Okay, so again, that was with the texture sand. This one doesn't have anything on it, but what I loved about this pumpkin was that it already had a bunch of really cool texture going on. Hi, Janet. So before the teal looking straight down at it, it looked like a chocolate bundt cake. <laughs> I could see that, Robin. Yes, I could definitely see that. But it's um, it's not. <laughs> but see that how that asphaltum's hitting that now as it starts to soak in. Um, again, it just married all those colors together. So, all right. So let's come to this one. And I'm going to get out a couple different colors. I'm going to get out some sour apple. And da, 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 da. I'm going to get some um, sea aqua. Okay, it's a greeny blue. A greeny blue. Let me think. Do I want that one? Actually, I'm going to go with sea breeze. That's going to give me more of a patina. Okay. So... Make sure you shake it up. Hello, Javine. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. Right, Andrea, it does. It looks like it weighs, you know, 50 pounds. And it's light as a football. But I do love that wash of asphaltum over it, I have to say. Okay, so let me get a brush dry brush, and I'm going to load it up with the um, Sour Apple. Really bright neon colored green. It's very bright. Load it up, wipe it off. Wipe a little bit more off. Just kind of let it hit where it hits. Again, I probably won't do all of this pumpkin, just half of it, so you can see the, the technique. And I see a, a couple places where I missed the black. And if you do, you can always just come back in, pop some black in there. But look how that sour apple is hitting all those raised bits. Okay, and then I'll pick up some Seabreeze, same brush. 
a little too much paint. Make sure you put it on and wipe it off. Get a little bit of a patinaed pumpkin. This would be pretty with blues. In fact, I might use some of that Bahama blue or even peacock teal. Okay, see how that's coming on. I'm gonna go to that peacock teal. And I haven't rinsed my brush out or anything. I'm just picking up the next color, then wiping it off. Oh yeah. So that's very um, kind of mermaid's tail. But I could see doing that black um, asphaltum, sunset gold, maybe getting a little bit like a leopard print. Ugh. In fact, I might have to try that. <laughs> um, because that texture in this pumpkin is, is giving exactly that. So. And again, transforming something with paint is so much easier Um, for it to fit your decor if it's not in the color that you want when you buy it or when you see it in the store. Um, hello, Judy. Okay. <laughs> Someone said, I'm going to the Dollar Tree. <laughs> um, okay. Now, let's pick up a little bit. I'm going to get a different brush. I'm going to pick up some um, Burnt Sienna because I do want to give a little bit of a brown tint to this, make it a little bit more fall, a little bit less mermaid tail. This is what I want you guys to think about. Just because I'm doing this on a pumpkin doesn't mean that when you go to paint something and let's say you're painting a piece and it has um, a water jug or a jar, um, or just a container, a flower pot on a design that you're painting. And you're like, oh, I wanna change it to something different. Same techniques you can do on that um, flat canvas, panel, whatever you're painting on, right? Layering those colors. So to get that texture, like if you want a texture like that, you could run gesso through a stencil, uh, modeling paste through a stencil, Okay, so I'm digging that, but I do want to try, like I mentioned, um, I have Sunset Gold here, and I wanna see if I can get a little bit of, kind of like a cheetah print. Okay, so I will start with a little bit of that Sunset Gold, and then just wipe it off. Wiped off too much. <laughs> but it's best to it is best to wipe it off too much than to go and dry brush too much paint. So, err on the side of caution and be conservative with your paint. And when you think you don't have any more on there, add a little bit more pressure and look what happens. It comes right off, okay? You could dry brush um, gold metallic on there and it's only gonna hit the raised bits. And I do, I think I ended up doing like six or eight of those bells that I did last year. Um, and those are up in my Christmas decor for me to put out. Um, and then I'll definitely have pumpkins this year too. Okay, so that's the sunset gold. I am going to do a little bit of the um, burnt sienna now. Oh, I love how that's picking up. Right, Molly Ann? It's amazing. It's simply amazing. Okay. And then I think I will pick up some of that dried clay even. Light pressure, light touch to start. And as that paint maybe starts to dissipate a little bit, you can add a little bit more pressure. But Mm 
Okay. So to me, that looks very, um, just that cheetah print, right? So let's get a little bit brighter. I'm going to mix a little bit of the dried clay and burnt sienna. And then I'll have to decide which one I like better so I can do the other pumpkin as well for my mantle. I'm, I'm leaning towards this one, to be honest. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that sunset gold. Hi, Donna. No problem. Happy you're here. Do you think you can get similar results with gunmetal gray? Absolutely. Absolutely. You could do some black, some gray, like a variety of values of gray. Um, but then gray is never just gray. You could throw in a little bit of lavender um, and maybe even a little touch of um, doxine purple. Okay, so that's sunset gold over those browns and stuff. Look how pretty that is. And again, it looks like it's, it looks like a paperweight. It looks like it's really heavy. It's not. It's very, very light. Okay, now I'm thinking I want to get, let me see if I have it here. Uh, I do. Moon yellow. So I'm going to get a little bit of moon yellow. Which is kind of to me like a, it's very tapioca looking. I haven't used this one obviously in a while. kind of banana cream looking as well. So load that up, wipe that off. Oop, let's get that excess off. I just want to hit a couple of places. Because what that's going to do for me is that's actually going to give me a very metallic look. That's going to give me um, gold. And there's nothing metallic about it. To finish this, you can do um, matte spray. Put a matte spray over it. Look how pretty that is. So, started with black, asphaltum, um, burnt sienna, dried clay, sunset gold, a little bit of moon yellow. Okay, digging, digging that. All right, I'm going to come back to this one that I didn't finish. It just had the burnt sienna on that side. So I am going to do some of that sunset gold and see if we can get kind of the same texturized look. Which we will because that texture in that styrofoam is really picking up those colors. Again, biggest thing is to not go overboard, to keep adding and adding and adding when maybe it doesn't need to have more added to it. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that sea breeze. Get a little bit of a patina. That's cool too. But I still like it on, on that one. What do you think? And then even that with that sea breeze. Oh, you know what? Maybe a little Bahama blue over that sea breeze. <laughs> Can you tell my brain's in overdrive? Oh, yeah. Just here and there. Very, very light pressure. Okay. Yeah, that Bahama. You can't go wrong with Bahama blue, right? So, anyway, I love saffron. I love saffron as well. So, it's a really, really pretty color, and it's pretty close. This is a little bit more yellow, the saffron, um, than the sunset gold. It's got more of an orange tint to it. Um, so, but I'm digging, where's that one that I did? The wash of asphaltum over how it brought it all together. Right there. Okay. Orange styrofoam, right? <laughs> Can't
can't go wrong with just layering those colors and having fun, building them up, dry brushing them on, letting things dry in between. I will, I will continue this one because I'm loving this whole look. Um, it's just got some great texture. I saw something in, um, I don't know if it was Architectural Digest, it was a magazine, and they had like all the little things where you could get the things that were pictured in the, um, the layout. And there was something similar to this, and I thought, I could make something like that. Um, snow text and paint, and it's gonna be beautiful with a little candle inside. So fun. So think about um, decor, table decor, as you're getting ready for the holidays and stuff. Um, dry brushing, this is such an inexpensive little thing to get that you could you know, even put someone's name on it, put a little tag on it with someone's name on it for a place setting, um, and just deck out your whole table with easy, quick painted pieces. You guys saw how easy and quick that came to be, right? Layering those colors. So, next week, <laughs> hopefully, I will be sharing with you guys how to do my pumpkin spice. As soon as it is up on the website, I will let you guys know. Another thing, let me pull my chair close to, is if you guys um, don't subscribe to my newsletter, you can go to my website. Again, it's right there, standymctierdesigns.com. Um, sign up for my newsletter, and I sent out a newsletter last week, and it had a free printable in it. And it's uh, sunflowers with hello fall. And you can print it off and paint it however you want. So um, I did one last year, but now I'm wanting to do more. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Can you dry snow text with a dryer? You can, Sue. Um, you can use the heat tool to dry it. I typically just put it on and go do something else and let it air dry. But it's not going to hurt it. So fight on the sidelines. Y'all must be watching football. <laughs> Um, several of the black ones last year, they were clearing them out. Yes, absolutely. So the thing I found with these, these were kind of hard to find this year. Um, I, I had some from the year before cause I did something else with them, some stacked things. Um, but this year I had a hard time finding them. And again, the one that I did find this year had, it was all white. So it doesn't matter. You're going to paint it. Um, and I just brush it on, mix that uh, texture sand paste with the black paint and just paint it on with a brush. Um, let it dry, you could do a second coat if you wanted to and then go from there, so. Um, and then these, they had plenty of these and then really cute acorns and I have those, I just have not done anything with them, so. Um, but I do think I might go with these more brown wrought iron um, with that side with the golden, but I could have them um, maybe some gold, some green. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yes, Bonnie, a plastic cauldron, same thing, same thing. And yes, it is amazing, Pam, right? How much paint can transform. So, all right, guys, hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I'm going to be glued to my chair, getting all of these convention submissions in. So let me just ask a little favor. If you, and if you could go and you can't go, but if you could, what would you wanna see me teach at a convention? <laughs> I already have some things um, planned out, but it's always good to get ideas and hear what you guys um, who go to these conventions and take classes would like to see. So drop me in the comments what you would like to see. So. Oh, thank you, Mimi. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lucy. Well, I have to tell you, I was a little stressed before we went live. <laughs> because two hours before when I went to load all the stuff on my website and I couldn't, I thought, I have to pivot. <laughs> so we pivoted today. So more fabric painting. Wendy, I will be doing um, some fabric painting. And I loved our lesson in the group. Um, in fact, our next Zoom in the group, um, they have a free quarterly Zoom class that I do with them so we can see everybody is glass painting. Um, and that's gonna be before the holidays, which, is be, which will be cool because I'm gonna share with you guys how you can do some table decor stuff, so. 
All right, Chattanooga's in June, so maybe something seasonal. Yes, I'm looking forward to that, Donna. Yes, calla lilies. I love calla lilies. I have done some. Um, hydrangeas, right, Janet? I used to kind of be known as the hydrangea queen. <laughs> That's all I painted for a long time was hydrangeas, as you can see there. Um, those are in water-soluble oils, but I haven't painted hydrangeas in a while, so I need to. Um, all right, guys, can you do a mixed media page in an art journal? Absolutely. I have offered my art journal classes um, at conventions, and they've done very, very well. So, um, yeah, fun, fun. Love the fabric painting class in the group. I even used it on a bread bag. That's awesome. Never been to one to fabric paint. Fabric painting is fun. It can be very frustrating if you don't know all the tips and tricks, but it can be fun. And again, you can transform old clothes um, into new pieces that uh, are one of a kind, basically. Another bag. All right, you're good at pivoting. Oh, thank you, Molly Ann. Thank you, thank you. I know, Dawn, right? I'm, I'm excited about the glass class too. Scarecrow painting would be nice. I did a scarecrow. Not sure if you can see him. Um, happy fall one that was actually a take on a class i did with my group so yes there will be lots of mixed media submissions going in donna um that's kind of where my head has been the last couple of weeks and um anyway all righty y'all have a fantastic week it's september <laughs> can you believe it um and it's still 87 degrees outside but um Get out those brushes, get out that paint, transform something. If you've been looking at an ugly vase or an ugly chair or an ugly stool or you go to the Dollar Tree and you get a bunch of things, transform it with paint, all right? Make it fit your decor. So get out those brushes, get out that paint, do something creative. Don't forget to like, comment, share, to be entered into the giveaways. And I will be back next Sunday, um, hopefully with my pumpkin spice project for you guys, all right? These items you did today would be would make would be good as a make and take or, or um, a random act of kindness. Absolutely, you know, like if you had a little wooden pumpkin, doing kind of that same technique, a little faux finish on it, give it a little patina look, slap a pin thing on the back and give it away. I think it would be super cute. Um, okay, guys, talk to y'all later. Have a great week. Um, thanks for being here. Greatly appreciate you. All right, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of inspiration.